the biggest, the baddest, the most feared snake in the tropics. We're talking Bushmasters, so don't go away. Hey, it's Willie. We're back at Venom Central. This is part two of our Bushmaster episode. Before we started, I want to thank my loyal subscribers because I'm going through my comments and I'm reading things and I, I try to get to all you. I swear I do. But you guys have been like hanging in there with me and, and, and I am just ecstatic. I, I, it really makes me happy to see you guys keep following me and you just keep on subscribing and it's growing and it's getting better and better. But you guys, you guys are my squad, man. The Venom Squad. That's it. You guys are my Venom Squad. But I want to thank you guys because if you guys weren't there supporting me, I would want to keep doing this because it's teaching you guys and the comments is making me happy. And that's going to give me the drive to keep doing these videos. So thanks guys. Thank you very much. And if you're new to the channel, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and stay on this ride with us because we're going to do a lot of cool stuff. And today is going to be a fun episode. We're going to talk about Bushmasters. I'm going to show you guys some really cool Bushmasters. We're going to talk about growth, care. We're going to get into it. So don't run off. We'll be right back. I want to talk about Bushmaster care and, and, and the animal itself. And to start out, we're going to show you one of our little babies and just how much growth goes on within one year. So... This is one of the babies that we just hatched out. Now, this baby happens to weigh 81 grams. That's a great number. And it's a big baby. And <clears throat> I want to show you the growth rate over two years and how much they grow. It's, it, it's just amazing how quick they grow. Because with Bushmasters, everything is slow. They're really a slow animal. Everything is slow about them, except the strike and how much they grow. Bushmaster is an interesting name. Okay, now, the scientific name, Lachesis, and with this species, it's Lachesis stenopheres. Now, Lachesis, it's, 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 it's derived from, from Greek mythology, and Lachesis is one of the three fates that, that determines the threat of your life, or your, your destiny, or your, your, actually your fate. So, it's kind of fitting that the Bushmaster scientific name is Lachesis, because... I mean, stomping around in a Costa Rican jungle in the middle of the night, and you run into a Bushmaster, I guess it's up to the Bushmaster what your fate's going to be. So, it's kind of cool. But, stenopheres. Stenopheres literally translates into thin brow. It all fits into puzzles somehow. <laughs> but anyways, now we know Bushmaster is the largest pit viper in the world. They can reach 12 foot. And I've never seen a 12 footer. The average size of a, of a, of a Bushmaster can range from six to seven to maybe eight foot. And that's, and that's on an average. But literally, I've seen a nine foot specimen and, and, and it's a monster. But Dittmar in 1910 recorded an 11 foot four inch stenophores in Costa Rica. That's a massive Bushmaster. That's, that's a very large snake. I mean, that snake coiled up on a fourth floor can probably bite you on the top of your head. But just some interesting little tidbits about Bushmasters. But now you've seen this little guy. Just to show you, that's how they start out. That's how they come out of the egg. Now this is an animal that my partner Matt hatched out last year around this time. So this snake is just now a year old. And I'm going to use this here. Let me see where he's at. <laughs> Get my face too close down there. All right. Now, this is literally a year, one year, okay? That's amazing. And this happens to be a, that's a little male. Yeah. Now, he's already picking up a heat signature off all these lights. That's what they do. They have, they are so tuned in to heat, it's unbelievable. It's, they are probably one of the best heat-seeking sources when it comes to the snake world there, they can pick up a fraction of a degree and it's, it's, it's incredible how they just lock in on the heat source. And they do this interesting behavior. Now, we call it thermal bobbing, where they'll lock on to, he just caught a heat signature off the camera. Where they'll lock on to a, 
to a heat source, say a prey item, and they'll periscope their head up high and they'll start bobbing. They'll bob their head up and down and they're trying to lock on to the hottest part of that prey item. See, now he's locking on me. And I'm going to give him a wide berth there. because this, Even though this snake is only about maybe three foot, it's still a very, very dangerous animal and it's got a good reach. So, but that is one year of growth rate. That is unbelievable. And keeping Bushmasters is actually, it's a different animal. I mean, a lot of snake keepers fail with keeping Lachesis because they don't understand them. And along with me and Matt, we're, we're, we're trying to log data. Data on everything. So we can unlock some of the secrets of this animal and better understand them so we can better reproduce them. And the thing is, is they are so delicate and so sensitive to heat and humidity that it makes it kind of tricky to keep them. And I hear all this stuff about how, you know, a lot of guys have them and they die right away. They only last a few months. And they are so sensitive. That's what it is. Bushmasters are a really sensitive snake. Now, we keep ours very cool. We, I mean, they'll max out at about 77 degrees. But temperatures at night will drop into the 60s. And that's when they're the most active is when it's cool. And now, humidity is important with Bushmasters. Keeping them humid is key. Now, and it's controlling the room. They need their own space. It's controlling the room humidity. Because keeping them wet, I'm going to put this guy back in his box, back in his bucket. But he's starting to get a little bit squirrely. And we don't want to stress them out too much. They stress really easy. And he's already beating on me. All right, buddy. And now, like I was saying, humidity is key with Bushmasters because if they're kept at an improper humidity, they won't do well. So it's not that you keep them wet, because keeping them wet is a death sentence to a Bushmaster because they are really susceptible. They're susceptible to, to belly rot and pink belly and getting scale infections. So Spraying them, trying to jack the humidity up in their enclosure, it doesn't work. It's not good for them. They cannot lay wet. They cannot be kept wet. They need to be kept dry. We keep all our Bushmasters dry. If they're not dry, they don't do good. But the humidity needs to be good. So I run a cool air humidifier in the Bushmaster room. And it keeps that humidity rate at about 75 to 77%. I like to see it sometimes up to 80%. But humidity is key. Humidity, dry and don't overfeed them. They stress really, really easy. Just this animal being out here, if it's left out here too long, it's going to get stressed. And when they stress out, they start acting a little bit peculiar. They don't get very active at night if they hold up. They're stressed, and it takes time for them to detune and calm down. They're kind of like humans. Once you get stressed, you need to go relax for a while and gather your thoughts back. Pushmasters are the same way. They just need time to chill back out. I've seen them stress because they've hit 80 degrees and were left there too long by novice keepers. And they're asking me, what's going on, man? This snake is it, it, it's rolling on its side. It's acting really weird. It's because they're keeping them too warm for too long. They can't do that. The whole thing with keeping them is cooler and a good humidity. That's what works for Bushmasters. And caging with Bushmasters, caging is important. Even though they will utilize a nice, tight hide space, they also utilize a large cage. They need space. They need space to roam. I watch them constantly. Bushmasters, if they don't have space to roam at night, as soon as the lights go out, as soon as their photo period goes to dark, they're on their own. And they'll pick and choose where they want to be. They'll switch positions. They'll get an ambush position on one side of the cage. They'll move a couple hours later to the other side of the cage and get another ambush position. That's just what they do. They, they will utilize space. And we try to use tall caging because they do a really unique thing. They don't act like a king cobra and hood up, but they periscope. They'll stand up and they'll look around. And it makes them comfortable. Or they can do that without them hitting their heads on the top of something. That's another thing that stresses them. So stress, low stress, the less you mess with them, the better. 
the proper temperature and proper humidity. But we're going to move on and I'm going to pull out another Bushmaster that is yet another year older. I showed you one that was just hatched out. I showed you one that was a year old. I'm going to show you one that is two years old so you can understand their growth rate and the proper care. They can thrive and get big fast. What you got to understand is everything that you're doing with Bushmasters is heat related. So I'm going to try to keep him away from the cameras. We might let the GoPro get in a little closer. Now, this is an animal that is literally a two-year-old. That's amazing. That's a two-year-old Lachesis tenophrys. And this is a male. Now, this guy here, see, they're actually pretty placid. I mean, he's not really tripping. He's not, he's not afraid. What it is is what, when they reach this size, this snake's five foot already. They kind of get, they kind of get ballsy. I mean, they're really confident in themselves. So, I mean, and they're fearless. And he's going to actually just kind of chill out. He's going to pick up on some heat signatures around here and see what's what. But I want to talk about some physical char characteristics of the Bushmaster. And, like, they've got a couple really cool things going on that other snakes normally don't have. Now, when they bite a prey item, they clamp down on it. And when they really clench it and start envenomating them, they grab in a live prey. They literally have these cool little labial shields that come off from, it's from the bottom of their lip. And it rolls up and covers up their eye. Their eye kind of sinks down into it behind and it covers their eye. It's a cool little shield that just pops up out of nowhere. And it's really neat because it protects this animal's eye from a kicking or a biting or a scratching rodent. And it's just, it's a miracle of nature. I mean, when you see it, we're going to put a little clip in here of one feeding to show you that, that eye flap. It's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And it protects their eyes. It, it's almost like the Batmobile. When, it, when Batman yells, shields, the shields come up and cover their eye. It's really cool. But And they also have a really neat little spike on the end of their tail. See, now I'm going to handle this guy very, very carefully. And it's not because I'm afraid that he's going to explode on me. It's because I don't want to stress him. I don't want this snake getting stressed. I want it to remain calm. It's not stressed. It's just kind of trying to figure out what's going on. Oh, see, he's not going to let me hold his tail. Now, I'm going to move this so you can get in a little closer with the GoPro and get that tail spike. Now, look at this spike on the end of this animal's tail. Can you see that? And it's actually sharp. That little spike. And... We really don't know the purpose of that spike, but we suspect it could be a defense mechanism. Now, maybe if a larger animal tried to grab a Bushmaster, would be that stupid or that unfortunate to mistake a Bushmaster for a prey at him and he can't bite him. Maybe they use that tail to reach around and stick him and, and kind of spook him off to try to, you know, maybe release him and then he can get bit with the real business end. But I've seen other snakes with this. I mean, I've handled hundreds of forest cobras that have this spike. And when I'm grabbing a forest cobra by the tail and moving it into an enclosure, they reach around with that spike and they stick you the same way. And also, it rattles its tail on the ground similar to a rattlesnake. And it may be used to rattle on the leaves and, and make a warning sound. But they actually call the Bushmaster in some countries the rattless rattlesnake. They also call it the Veragusa. I mean, it's got a bunch of different names. But in some countries, they actually even call the Bushmaster the pineapple snake. And that's just because of its very prickly appearance. Because the Bushmaster's skin is so, his scales are so heavily kilted that they almost become rough to the touch. I mean, they're really a gnarly snake. I mean, just the appearance of them is gnarly. But to touch one is really really prickly and it's really rough they're almost sharp it's really cool but 
We're going to put a little clip in to see if we can show you the, the eye shields on a Bushmaster when it's grabbing a prey at them. Because it's, it's, it's something I think is nature has done such a marvelous job creating that for them. It's cool. But now, this snake is a two-year-old. And most people wouldn't believe that. But I'm going to tell you, everything with Bushmasters is slow. Besides their growth rate. If they're fed correctly, they will grow quickly. And you just don't feed them a whole lot. You just feed them the right size meal at the right time. Because you can overfeed a Bushmaster and they'll gain more fat bodies, which isn't good for them. A Bushmaster should be long, lean, and muscular. Females can carry a little more weight and be fine with it. But males, breeding males, should be long and muscular, like this one. And now this guy's only two, so unbelievable, right? I mean, what a magnificent animal. And I'm trying to keep him calm. I don't want to stress him, because stress is the enemy with Bushmasters. Stress, high heat, and moisture. You would think this animal, he comes from a tropical, decadent forest. He comes from primary forest where, yes, it may be raining a lot, but this animal does not need to be kept wet. Keeping them wet is the enemy. That soil down there is really a lot of clay in it. So I believe it maybe absorbs the water quickly and the ground may dry up very quickly. But Bushmasters are one of them animals that will stay hidden for most of the day. And when the lights go out, that's when they're out. They are definitely a nocturnal hunter. It's fun to watch them switch positions and move around and try to figure out where they want to sit for the night to try to kill something. But, <laughs> see, now he's, he's actually being a really good boy. And we're just going to let him explore a little bit. But I'll tell you, I've been fortunate enough to have this opportunity to work with these to work with these animals again. And, uh, and Matt and myself, you know, we've bred these animals several times each of us and, and we're, we're, we're logging as much information as we can. We're trying to learn more about this very cool snake and there's not a lot of data out there so we're just trying to gather as much data on everything that we can get and we record everything that we do. We literally record everything that we do. I record the weight of each meal, the time it was consumed. I record when the snake defecates. I record when the snake sheds. I record how much the snake weighs from month to month. We record everything. And we also record our breeding process, which that we hold pretty tight to the chest. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed this. And I just want to share some knowledge about Bushmasters. And, and we've got a lot of knowledge on them. But I'm going to tell you, there's not enough. And... I can't say that I'm an expert, but we're putting in the time and we're putting in the hard work to learn more about this animal. So there are some breeders in the U.S. and in Europe and in Germany and Sweden that are reproducing lachesis. And I would love to get their data. We're trying to create a database to get as much knowledge as we can about this rare animal. So... <laughs> He's like, I can live in here. And actually, we we turned the air conditioning on in this room to cool this room down. But it's starting to get a little bit warm in here. So I'm going to can this snake up. And look what a good boy he's being. I'm going to can him up and we're going to put him back in the Bushmaster room where he belongs. Hey, I hope you guys liked this, this episode. And I hope you learned a little something. Even if you're not a snake person, just an education period about Bushmasters, about one of the rarest venomous snakes in the world. But, hey, don't forget to come back, check on Venom Central, share, give us the thumbs up, give us the like button. And please, if you're new, subscribe, because you won't want to miss this. we got a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Thank you very much. This is Willie, Venom Central, checking out. Later.